All right, welcome back, folks. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and today we're going to be talking about the quarterbacks in this draft. And, th and that's right. We're going to start with the quarterbacks. We're going to go through all of the positions here, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on who makes the most sense for the Rams. Uh, before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and uh, follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. Let's get going. So, look, I need to preface with this. I do not believe the Rams should take a quarterback unless they were told by Matthew Stafford, which I'm not saying they were, but if they were told by Matthew Stafford that he's going to be retiring soon, that's the only thing I could really understand. I don't think this is the time to take a quarterback. I think you have an opportunity now and keep in mind, you also have to replace Aaron Donald. You're not going to be able to do that, but you have to at least be able to add some sort of star power. Um, you know, try to replace what you're losing in Aaron Donald. Again, you're probably not going to do it, but try to get close to it. But you also have an opportunity because you have your first first round pick that you appear to be keeping for the first time since 2016. So, Keep that in mind. 2019, I know they had the first round pick. They traded out of the first round. They drafted Taylor Rapp, but they do have the first rounder this time. So with that said, what direction could the Rams go in? Well, first off, I just want to say um, I have watched 12 quarterbacks fully evaluated and everything um, feel pretty good about where I stand on them. I'm going to start off with number two here on my board because number one is Caleb Williams. He won't be there for the Rams as much as a lot of you would like that. Um, number two is Drake May. Now, I'm not saying that Drake May is going to fall into the Rams' lap, but if for whatever reason on draft night, Drake May were to fall and say he fell into the, the back end of the top 10, I think the Rams would have to consider a trade-up. Now, I've said over and over again, the trade-up shortlist for me would be for Romo Dunze, for Oluf Fashionu, or it would be for Joe Alt. Now, there are exceptions to that. If, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. fell there, if Caleb Williams fell there, kind of you have to include them. But I also think you have to include Drake May. May is intriguing because this is somebody who kind of like Josh Allen. That's who he reminds me of Josh Allen going into, you know, the season and like before he got drafted, everyone was talking about him being a top prospect, right? He's going to be a top quarterback. You know, everyone was all over him. And then they look at his numbers and they're like, eh, I don't know. And I'll, I'll be honest. I'm the first one to say, you know, self scouting over here. Wasn't high on Josh Allen. Really didn't get it. I didn't buy in the hype. I saw the athleticism and everything, but I too fell victim to the fact that he was playing at Wyoming and not having anywhere near as good of production as some of the other guys who have not done anything in the NFL. So with that being said, production matters, but to an extent. And context is needed. Because my number three quarterback is Jaden Daniels, okay? Okay. And I hear all the time, well, Jaden Daniels is ahead of Drake May because he was more productive and he won the Heisman. And I'm sitting there saying, you know what? If we're going to do the whole production thing, and that's why we're going to say that Jaden Daniels is better, why are we not going to add context to that? Why are we not going to talk about the fact that Drake May is not throwing to two first-round wide receivers? Because he's not. He's throwing to one potential third-round receiver in, uh, you know, Devontae's, but I don't think, you know, he didn't have anybody that was on the level of Brian Thomas Jr. or Malik Neighbors, to be fair. So with that said, let's get back to Drake May. I'm not saying he is going to be a legitimate option, but Drake May, I think the pros there, you look at the prototypical size at quarterback, you look at an outstanding arm strength in Drake May, the velocity to fit into a tight window, no matter where it is on the field. I think he can really make any throw on the field. He's got the mobility that you look for in the modern day NFL, and he can throw off platform with ease. Now, 
This is somebody that I think was penalized multiple times upon multiple times on tape where he would put the ball right on the money. He had a specific play that really stood out to me where he's throwing off his back foot because he has to. A guy blitzed right up the middle and now he has to let go of the ball. While he's getting hit, he throws this. It's cold. I believe there, it was, there was pouring rain. He puts it right where it has to be and it's dropped over the middle of the field. And that is kind of what Drake May dealt with. I mean, it's pretty much an example of what he dealt with for the most part this past year at UNC. Um, I mean, it, it was not fun to watch. I actually felt pretty bad for him. Now, it's not to say those receivers are bad, but they're not two first-round receivers. So I think with May, the pros are there. And, you know, he's 21 years old and that matters in a draft where all of these quarterbacks, almost all of them took an extra year because of COVID. So they're all going to be 23, 24, 25 years old. And then you have Drake May, who's a young 21 years old. That's pretty good. And it matters because when you think about doing the whole Jordan Love thing, Jordan Love, it was young enough to do that, right? You know what? He's 25 right now. That's good. You don't want to draft a guy who's going to be, I've already said this so many times in this channel, but you don't want to draft a guy who's going to be 24, 25 years old um, coming in. And then by the time they become a starter from whenever Matthew Stafford hangs it up, you're talking about 28, 29 years old as the starter their first year. That's too much. Drake May, though, sitting behind Matthew Stafford for a year, two years, three years, I could actually sign up for that. It it depends, though. Does he fall? I don't think he's going to, but if teams overlook him, if they you know they overdo it with all the hype for the other quarterbacks, I think they're making a mistake. Now, his weaknesses are the fact that he's an erratic decision maker, but I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that, look, he's trying to make plays, and a lot of these guys are dropping passes. He wasn't exactly on the best team and he didn't have the best offensive line help. So with that said, I forgive him in that regard. Plus he's younger. I think he'd be much better in the pros at that, getting better coaching, so forth. He gets frantic under pressure. This is also a normal thing, okay? You don't have a lot of guys that you can really go to, okay? And that's the thing, like I was watching the tape and I was really, you know, concerned almost for him because... It just seemed like they were, you know, you'd blitz him and the offensive line couldn't do anything about it. Um, in addition to that, he needs to work on his mechanics. But this, again, is one of those things I think the NFL is really going to fix. And as he grows into his body even more, because, again, he's 21 years old, I think he's going to be even better. And he's not going to have to really put everything he has into his arm. So those are my thoughts on the first quarterback that we're talking about here that might be an option for the Rams, but very likely won't Drake may with that said, this video is brought to you by Manta sleep. You can get your Manta sleep purchase 10% off using my promo code JK Bogan. If you want to use that Manta sleep promo code, what are you getting with it? Well, you would be buying a sleep mask. And to be honest with you, Everyone should probably be buying one at this point because we all have a hard time sleeping. And if you don't think you have a hard time sleeping, you're kidding yourself. No one can sleep today's age. Nobody. And I'm not speaking for myself. I need it. You probably need it too. So why not black out everything and make it easier? There are plenty of options to choose from, from a silk one, from a pro one, from one that connects to your phone, one that has steam cups that can help with your eyes, dry eye, things like that, uh, a cooling cup, and then, of course, a weighted sleep mask. Get yours today at Mantis Sleep using promo code JKBOGAN to get 10% off. Now back to the video. All right, guys. So with that said, we're moving on from Drake May. Not going to talk too much about Jaden Daniels, who's my third quarterback in this draft. Reason being, I actually thought he'd be number one, first off. But second, he's going number two. Okay. I watched Adam Schefter on a podcast. The whole thing went viral on Twitter. Uh, at least I believe so, because it was on my feed. I had never seen it before. Jaden Daniels, get, get your Jaden Daniels shirts ready or jerseys ready. Uh, for Washington commanders. So look, Jane Daniels probably going number two, right? 
Drake May is the one guy where if New England doesn't take a quarterback there and the hype around J.G. McCarthy, it could push Drake May down the board. But what if the hype around J.J. McCarthy is none other than a myth? What if the entire time it was a smokescreen? I seem to remember, I wasn't born yesterday, so I seem to remember not that long ago when a quarterback who came out of Liberty was dubbed as this top 15 pick, no doubt about it, had a good pro day, the you know workout script, everything. People were giving him credit for. And then he went in the third round. That was Malik Willis. I, I remember that, okay? Um, does that mean J.J. McCarthy's Malik Willis? Absolutely not. With that said, J.J. McCarthy could be a potential smokescreen. I don't think so. I do think he's going to go relatively high. But if he doesn't and he were to fall, does he make sense for the Rams? Now, personally, I'm going to just say this real quick so you guys know where I stand on this draft. This draft, this quarterback draft, this could absolutely, okay, this could age so poorly what I'm about to say. But I think this draft is ungodly overrated, okay? I, I think the idea that we have mock drafts out there that have six quarterbacks going in the first round is obscene. It's absolutely obscene, okay? The only first-round quarterbacks that I have on my board, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, you're really kind of pushing it there. That's what I have, okay? I do not see six first-round picks. I don't see five. I don't even see four, okay? But... J.J. McCarthy, there's a reason why they're talking about him. And if you're concerned or, or you're confused why he's getting so much buzz, I'm going to try to explain this to you the best way I can. First off, McCarthy's young, 21 years old. I, I like that. I, I will check that box off there. Same thing with Drake May. I like the younger quarterback, especially in a world where you're going to see a lot of older quarterbacks coming into the league. McCarthy is outstanding on third down. I don't know why, but this guy rises to the occasion. You go and you watch the film, Michigan, you have a third and long. He's most often going to come up with the first down conversion, and he's going to make a dime of a throw in doing so. He's a good decision maker. This is somebody that I think surprised me, honestly, really surprised me in his decision making Great pocket presence. This is somebody that's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to move around in the pocket. He uses his mobility, but he's going to keep, and this is a big thing that I notice when I'm watching tape on a rookie quarterback or a quarterback prospect, I'm always trying to make sure a lot of these guys will run. A lot of these guys are mobile, but if you don't keep your eyes up, you are killing yourself in the play. You are killing the play. The play is dead. Essentially, you are running around not knowing what is available downfield. Okay, and those are the, the good quarterbacks, the great quarterbacks, the ones that are able to extend the play aren't just using their legs to take off and flee. No, no, no. They're using their legs to buy time to make a better play with their arm. OK, and that's something that I noticed J.J. McCarthy do. And it doesn't mean he can't run for a first down here and there as well, because he has that scrambling ability. In addition to that, he has the velocity to throw into a tight window. And I actually came away very impressed with it. Now, mind you, I've never been super high on J.J. McCarthy uh, until, you know, I'm not super high on him now, but I, I at least understand the hype a little bit. Um and I'll, I'll elaborate on that. Now we go into the cons. He's an incomplete quarterback, okay? He hasn't fully grown into his body yet. To be fair, he's 21 years old. The mechanics have to be worked on. He doesn't have perfect mechanics. He has inconsistent accuracy. He will absolutely nail a 15-yard throw over the middle in between two defenders, on third down, but then maybe on first down, he misses an easy layup throw. That's something that I noticed on tape. His throwing tempo is often rushed. And what I mean by that is it's not always the same. You know, sometimes he looks very fluid and everything's going and like, you know, you see it and it's just like his, his mind, body and soul are all together. And then other times you see him really frantically. And that's the thing. It's going to throw you off when your tempo's rushed with anything well you know with 
anything, literally anything. If you throw your tempo off, you can't expect the same results when you have, you know, quality stability, if you will. So with that said, my point on JJ McCarthy is this. He's probably not going to be available for the Rams, but if he is a smoke screen, okay, and he falls down, I could see the Rams having interest in him. And I could see it being, it wouldn't be my favorite pick, but I could understand it seeing as he's a 21-year-old and not a 24-year-old. Now, another thing I want to point out here with McCarthy is that it's important to realize with my rankings, I'm not just grading the tape. I'm not just taking production into account. I'm talking about guys and I'm trying to figure out when I'm scouting these guys, how well are they going to translate? How well does their stuff on tape translate to the NFL? How likely is it that they're going to succeed? That plays into it. And I think McCarthy is more likely to succeed than the guys below him. That's what I have to say. Next up is the one guy where, you know, not one of the big names, but if I had to bet on anybody being a potential star or like really good player, like Kirk Cousins level, I'm saying Spencer Rattler, who comes in at five on my board, and he is the first Ram option that you could actually say will be there at pick 19, 52, and potentially 83. Spencer Rattler is incredibly intriguing because this was a high priority high school recruit you know, coming out of high school, of course, goes to Oklahoma, loses the job to Caleb Williams, ends up transferring to South Carolina. Now I'm obviously paraphrasing a lot of that, but the point I'm making here is that Rattler went from Oklahoma, went away from that high octane passing attack that really doesn't work necessarily in the NFL. They don't run all the same concepts to a South Carolina team. That's not very good. Doesn't have the super quality prospects all around him like Oklahoma. He did have Xavier Leggett, to be fair, but they run a pro-style offense, okay? That actually, we talk about translating. What's the most likely to translate to the NFL? Well, Spencer Rattler in a pro-style offense, that sounds pretty good. Pro-style offenses are used in the NFL quite a bit. So the pros on him, great mechanics. I love the way this guy throws the rock. He has pro-style experience, like I said. He has He's a true pocket passer, okay? This is a balanced quarterback who in college might take off and scramble and get some yards. But in the, the reality is this. He is probably just going to be a pocket passer with limited mobility at the NFL level. He, his speed doesn't wow you, although he can move his legs just like the way Matthew Stafford can. That's about what you're getting with him. He's got a solid frame and he's got quality arm talent, can make just about any throw on the field. I have no issue with that. My issues with Rattler, he's an erratic decision maker, okay? So keep in mind... If we're looking at production, Spencer Rattler not playing in an air raid style offense versus somebody who is playing in an air raid style offense, he is going to look much worse statistically. It's why, yes, okay, I like the production stance. I like taking into account analytics. I also like taking things in with context. And the context is certainly needed as to why Spencer Rattler didn't throw 30 touchdowns compared to some other guys. And that's why, because he's playing in a pro style offense. It's not just, you know, four verts down the field type deal. Not saying they all are, but you get my point. The timing isn't the best with him. So erratic decision making, timing is off. He doesn't have any jaw dropping qualities and he's not a threat with his legs. Those are my cons with Spencer Rattler. Of course, keep in mind, that's not a ton. You can work with that. You can get better in all of those categories. And in addition to that, he's my fifth prospect. But in this draft, it puts him in like the third round. It's not a, in my opinion, I don't think it's a great quarterback class. But I like Spencer Rattler a lot. And I think with the right coaching staff, especially if he went to the Rams as a backup in the third round, he would probably beat out <clears throat> Stetson Bennett um, and he would have a shot to, you know, make a run in preseason and push Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, that's just the way it is. So Spencer Rattler comes in at five. Number six is a quarterback that I really was not too 
familiar with. And then I started watching the tape and I started to see Gardner Minshew 2.0. Um, initially I thought it was case Keenum. I, I thought we saw kind of like a, you know, kind of like a gunslinger case Keenum coming out of Houston, but the accurate, he's accurate in all levels of the field. And I'm talking about, you know, Michael Pratt out of Tulane. He's number six on my board. Pratt is another option for the Rams. Okay. Pratt is a legitimate option for the Rams, just like Spencer Rattler. The other two that I mentioned, Drake may kind of a prayer. You're kind of hoping he falls if you want him and JJ McCarthy, probably not. But again, you never know. These two though, Rattler and Pratt are very realistic. Pratt does fit what the Rams do in my opinion with what he brings to the table. Again, he's accurate in all levels of the field. He's good at recognizing coverages. He throws with solid ball placement. I think that's a big thing for me to see that you're already throwing with touch and you you know you're displaying that accuracy and you're you're showing that you could be pinpoint accurate here and there, that's what I like to see, and that's what Pratt shows you. He does not drop his eyes when he's on the move. He does have some mobility, and he's very consistent, and it's why Tulane was, all of a sudden came out of nowhere as a really good program. Um, not saying that's the only reason. They've had a lot of really good players, but you have to have a good quarterback, and Pratt was that. The problem with Pratt is that he's got average arm strength. So think about, uh, yeah, Case Keenum, John Wolford, you know, um, the mechanics are not the best. Okay. He doesn't deal with pressure ultimately that well. He has some durability concerns and he struggles to throw with anticipation. Um, so that's, that's the one thing he's lacking big time traits. Um, and he's not always confident in, you know, really pulling the trigger on a throw. So that's something to keep in mind. So we move on to number seven here. And actually, I just read off seven uh, that the, the cons from Michael Pratt are average arm strength, lacking big time traits, not always confident when he should pull the trigger on a throw, not the durability concerns or struggles to throw with anticipation. Anyway, we move on. Number seven, Michael Penix Jr. OK, that might surprise you guys because I know a lot of people want him in the first second. I don't, but I could see it. Um Penix Jr. is a lefty. That's not why I'm not against lefties. Let's calm down there. Um, but Michael Penix Jr., I'd be going crazy if I didn't mention how good of a deep ball thrower he is. He's got a lively arm, a lot of zip. He's got mobility. I believe he ran a 4-5, around that 4-5, four, 4-6. Four, um, he's got confidence, and he's absolutely fearless. But... Michael Penix Jr. has a bevy of injury concerns, which is a big reason why he's still in college. Um, he's older because of it, so he'll be 24 this year. Mechanics are not the best. He's very stiff, uh, very stiff. He doesn't deal with pressure well. He does have those durability concerns, like I mentioned, and he struggles to throw with anticipation. I want to like Penix, but I really in the reality of it is that the guy's a winner. You got to give him credit for that. And the way he was able to bounce back from his rough start in college at Indiana, I also give him credit at the same time, though, he's getting overrated. I see we see this every year. He seems to be like the guy that people are trying to push into the first round. I just don't know what we're doing. He's not a first round quarterback and that's okay. Um, I, I think he's like a third, maybe even a fourth. He'll probably go in the second. Maybe he goes in the first, but I would be a little concerned if the Rams drafted him because I, it's not that I think he's bad. It's just, I don't see why you would spend such a valuable pick on a quarterback that, you could probably find next year if we're being honest. Um, I don't think Penix is special by any stretch, nor do I think Pratt or Rattler are special. I think the only one that's really special in this draft that cannot be replicated is Caleb Williams. I don't think there's anybody next year that does what Caleb Williams does. And I don't think Caleb Williams is a perfect prospect. I have my reservations about him, but I think he's special. I do think there are things that he does 
off script, the throw on the run, the velocity. I mean, he looks at times a little bit like Patrick Mahomes did coming out of Texas Tech. And I remember because Patrick Mahomes, my number one quarterback in that draft. So on the Michael Penix Jr. front, could absolutely see the Rams being interested. Personally, I would back off. I'd be more interested in Pratt uh, later on because I know Penix is going to go higher. Would be more interested in Pratt. Would be more interested in Rattler. That's what I say there. Number eight, Bo Nix, Oregon. This is the last quarterback on this list of 12 quarterbacks that I watched where you could say would go on day two. I I mean, I could see Pratt going on day two, Penix going on day two, even Rattler. Nix is the last one here. Uh, Quality build, you know, looks the part. He's athletic. He's got a quick release, which I like. He's got a big arm. Um, He can throw off platform. And he's a good deep ball thrower of the football. With that said, I do not love Bo Nix. The reason being he's older. That still bothers me. The older quarterbacks. I know maybe I'm petty. I don't know, but it bothers me. He is somebody in my opinion, that is way too erratic as a processor of the game. You watch him and there'll be times where, you know, he's going through his progressions and it's almost like he's doing a speed run, like he's playing a video game trying to to do the the speed run on a YouTube channel, right? Like you have to go through your progressions at a normal pace. Like it, there'll be times where he'll just go right through and he had a guy who's about to break open and he's not throwing with anticipation enough so he's not going to be able to even hit those throws, which those are the throws you got to make in the NFL. Um, he lacks consistent ball placement, which again is a concern of mine. I, I watch him, you know, he's got really good deep ball ability, but there are times where he'll just put it, you know, not where it should be. And now all of a sudden it's a contested catch when in reality it shouldn't have been because Troy Franklin absolutely blew the cornerback out of the water. Um, so there's that. And then he has shoddy mechanics. I, I don't love his throwing mechanics at all. Um, I am concerned about that. And I think he's got a lower ceiling, higher floor, lower ceiling. Bo Nix to me feels like if you were going to take a quarterback, you know, in the, in the first round, Bo Nix would be the worst quarterback that you could draft out of everybody you're talking about that has been linked in the first round. Because I think at best he's Ryan Tannehill. Okay, that's what I see. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm not rooting against any of these guys. These are kids. I'm not rooting against them. Um, At the same time, though, like I I have to be honest here. Bo Nix is not the quarterback that I would want being the future for the Rams. I know a lot of people are getting hyped about him. I've seen it. I don't see why you would get hyped. I see a guy who's just a guy that you could probably get next year if I'm being honest. And that's a big thing you're going to keep hearing, okay? Next year's class gets so much crap at being this, oh, it's just absolutely terrible. Nobody holds a candle to any of these guys. And I think a big reason for that is because of Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams has been for now two years considered to be the obvious de facto number one quarterback in this draft. And it was until recently people started acting like he's not the best quarterback in the draft because he paints his fingernails and cries, you know, after a tough game to, you know, his mom, like kind of ridiculous when you think about it. But Caleb has always been the best and most talented quarterback in this draft, in my opinion. Um, With that said, I do think, you know, because Caleb Williams is as good as he is and he offers the things he does and he has those special qualities, people are looking at next year and saying, well, I like Shadur Sanders and I I, I like, you know, Quinn Ewers and guys like that, but they don't have that special ability. Um, And and I mean, I think that's, that's fair, but at the same time, it's not because... I don't think Bo Nix has anything that, you know, none of those guys next year have. I mean, I, I don't I don't think you drafting Bo Nix this year is getting ahead of next year because I think next year, like I'd probably rather wait for Shadur Sanders. I'd probably rather wait for Drew Alar, uh, you know, from Penn State. I'd probably rather wait for those guys instead of drafting Bo Nix in the first or second round. But those are my thoughts. 
Um, next up, Jordan Travis from Florida State. He's a guy that I could see the Rams drafting. Uh, dual threat quarterback, dynamic with his legs, throws well on the run, displays natural touch and accuracy, and he has great escapability. His cons are that he's an older quarterback. He's coming off a major injury, and he does have durability concerns in that regard. He's got middling arm strength, and he lacks ideal build. Now, again, this kind of feels like a John Wolford guy. Um, at the same time, I could totally see the Rams drafting him. One big game at Florida State. You can't take that away from him. Number 10, Devin Leary out of Kentucky. The connection there, Liam Cohen being the offensive coordinator. You have to wonder if something would you know happen there. With that said, Leary has everything you would want as far as raw traits in a quarterback. He's got crazy arm strength. He's got great ball velocity. He's confident. He's got good mechanics, and he can play off script. The problem is Leary has inconsistencies all over his game. The ball placement's not there. The accuracy, the pacing, and the decision-making is just simply not at the level it needs to be. It's why if Leary had even half of those things going you know, at a decent clip, he'd probably be going in the top three rounds because of his natural traits. The arm strength is outstanding. But with that said, he doesn't have those. And for that reason, he's an intriguing option for the Rams to take and pick up late in the seventh, sixth, or even as an undrafted rookie free agent. Number 11 is Joe Milton out of Tennessee. Milton has a rocket arm. He's got the perfect frame for quarterback. He's quite honestly Anthony Richardson if he was raw at age 24. Unfortunately, he's not even close to Anthony Richardson because I think Anthony Richardson, who gets a lot of crap for you know his accuracy and everything, Milton is even worse, okay? And that's a problem. The zip on his throws allow him to make any throw on the field. At the same time, he's an older quarterback who offers no touch. He has one speed, and it is a fastball. And really, he doesn't throw with anticipation. He's erratic in his dropbacks, and he's way too inconsistent. Now, with the tools, the traits, the things like that, maybe you take a risk on him and say, Tennessee didn't really develop him the way they probably should have. Maybe we can do that. I'm sure an NFL team will do that. I mean, obviously, the traits are there, but he's 24. And I do have concerns if he's still raw, it might not work out. He might end up having to switch positions, which I've already seen be brought up, potentially him as a tight end. Number 12, Sam Hartman, Notre Dame. Pros, he's solid at everything, okay? This is a really solid quarterback uh, prospect, okay? Heavy emphasis on his accuracy, toughness, mental processing. When you look at him, you, you think, okay, he looks the part, feels like an NFL quarterback. The problem is the cons are he's limited, like very limited, average to below average arm strength, mobility, has an extensive injury history, and he's going to be 25 this year. Um, so that's a big out on, on Sam Hartman. I've only watched 12 quarterbacks, and I only intend to watch 12 quarterbacks. I don't really like this class. I've said that before, but I, I'll say this. Drake may is an option. If he falls, I think the Rams would love him. Uh, I mean, same thing with Caleb, obviously, and Jaden, but that's not happening. Drake may could though, if new England decides to pick Marvin Harrison jr, it would kind of mess up the whole draft that we've all kind of put in our head, assumed in our head. And maybe a guy like Drake may falls through the cracks. If that happens, I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams were interested. JJ McCarthy would not be surprised. If the Rams are interested. I think he's a fit. I think Drake may a fit. Would I want to draft a quarterback in the first round? No, I really wouldn't. But sometimes you find out things, and if the Rams found out, hey, this is Stafford's last year, he tells them they would go that route. Um, Spencer Rattler, who's my number five quarterback, I think he's a great fit for the Rams if they decide to take a quarterback on day two. Same with Michael Pratt. I think late day two, um, you know, in the third round, Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix is where I would take them personally, but I wouldn't take them because, I mean, I might take Penix. I would not take Bo Nix. Um, I think that there are plenty of Bo Nixes in the next draft. Michael Penix Jr., eh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think so, but there are some things I do like about him, and I think he definitely could be a Ram. I think he's somebody that the Rams would really like. 
Um, Jordan Travis is somebody that could be a Ram. You're probably looking at the fourth to sixth round. Devin Leary, I'd say sixth to undrafted rookie free agent. Joe Milton, sixth to undrafted rookie free agent. And Sam Hartman, sixth to undrafted rookie free agent. Those are my thoughts. I'm curious what you guys think. Currently, I just don't really love this quarterback class, but there are some good quarterbacks to, to keep an eye on. And I do think if you're looking for a potential franchise quarterback to develop behind Matthew Stafford, a guy that could legitimately take over, I'm not talking about the hope. I'm saying this guy has it in him where if, you know, the Rams continue to do what they do and they develop him, he's going to end up being the franchise quarterback post Stafford. You're looking at, in my opinion, these guys. Caleb Williams, if you drafted him, which he's not an option. Drake May, okay, if he fell into their lap. Jaden Daniels, potentially, if he fell, which isn't going to happen. J.J. McCarthy, potentially. Potentially Spencer Rattler. And then I think after that, maybe Michael Penix, Michael Pratt, maybe. But I, I don't think so. I think you're looking at those guys as bottom 15, bottom 16 quarterbacks in the league. And I think when you look at the top five that I have, Williams, May, Daniels, McCarthy, and Rattler, those are the top five, in my opinion, that could actually be franchise quarterbacks at the next level. So those are my thoughts. Longer video, fun video, draft video. This will be kind of the same thing that we do mo moving forward. However, I won't use the top 10 necessarily on my board uh, for other positions. The reason I did it with quarterback is because I only had 12. I'll have much more. So I'll probably just make a top 10 with the best fits for the Rams. And we'll go about that. If you like this, please let me know if you did. Drop a comment, like, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.